Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. So yet again, I wanted to address the migrant crisis and what is going on in New York City. They're currently preparing hotels for more of an influx of illegal immigrants. And people are noticing that they're doing all of this for migrants or illegal immigrants, yet there are homeless people on the streets. Once again, seemingly putting illegal immigrants before the citizens of this country before the people of these cities who pay taxes, who work hard. And, you know, there's people who need a helping hand. There's people who need assistance and they are going unnoticed. They're not rolling out the red carpet for the homeless in this city. Now, we know about the case of Jordan Neely and, you know, there's a lot of debate around that. But the question is, what happened? for him to be in the position that he was in in the first place. A lot of people are saying that his family failed him, but more notably, he was failed by the system. So this was somebody he was arrested 44 times, but he was released back out onto the street multiple times. If he had been locked up, if they weren't so soft on crime, he would still be alive today. Or if he was given the help that he needed for mental health issues, more than likely he would still be alive today. If they were housing our homeless, like they are housing these illegal migrants, Jordan Neely more than likely would still be alive today. He wouldn't have been out on the street, destitute. He would have been in the Roosevelt Hotel, for example. In New York City with the very latest. Nate, what are we learning? Hey, hey John, good afternoon. Mayor Adams expects 15 migrant buses to arrive in New York City this weekend, and their first stop will be the iconic Roosevelt Hotel. So the first bus arrived at the hotel this morning. This will be the city's main intake center moving forward. Migrants will be given food and water here, as well as legal and medical services. But some migrant families, John, will actually live here. Starting today, 175 families will be living at the Roosevelt. That number will increase to 850 families in time. Now, the hotel's been closed for three years, but now it's part of the mayor's solution to this crisis that keeps getting bigger in scale. Take a look. Another migrant bus arrived at the Port Authority this morning. Uh, we counted 38 migrants, and this comes one day after the mayor sent two migrant buses to Sullivan County, New York. Within hours after that, John, the county declared a state of emergency, joining 20 other New York counties trying to stop the city from busing migrants there, and Mayor Adams showed some frustration. Listen. And whomever is telling us not to go somewhere, I have one question from them. You tell me where we should go then. That's what uh, John, I mean. a quick update on a story from earlier this week about homeless veterans being displaced from a hotel in Newburgh, New York, uh, to make room for migrants. We're now looking into new reports that a veterans advocate misled lawmakers about or and media outlets about a story that some homeless men may have uh, been hired to pose as veterans. We've reached out to the organization for a statement, but so far have not heard back. As you saw there, they are preparing hotels that were closed uh, during the whole COVID situation where businesses failed because they weren't allowed to stay open because they stopped people traveling and locked people down. Businesses like hotels ended up closing down. So now they're reopening these hotels, repurposing them for illegal immigrants. And Mayor Eric Adams, he wants everybody to do their part. He's now saying that these migrants, they could be moved all over the country. Why is it just on New York City and other big cities? Sanctuary cities, remember? Cities that they declared were sanctuary cities. Mayor Lightfoot declared that. So rightly so, Republican um, you know, mayors and governors decided that, OK, we're going to send some to you. And New York and Chicago are sanctuary cities. Their residents voted for this insanity. Why are they complaining? Oh, the irony is thick, Rita. The irony is thick. Turnaround <laughs> is fair play. You know, it's so funny. First of all, I love the political theater of Abbott and other border states sending uh, their illegals up north because all they did was it forced them to say the quiet part out loud. They sound like conservatives. We don't want people who cause, sorry, they sound like Trump. We don't want to cause illegals causing crime in our cities. You know, it's so funny. They're a sanctuary city, but you know, 
Mayor Adams is reopening a jail to house the illegals. It's incredible. It would, it's very you welcoming. wouldn't believe me if it wasn't true. You know, and then he's, of course, well, even better, he's re-gifting the illegals up north to upstate New York. He is now shuttling them out of New York State. They're freaking out, Rita, you know, over thousands of migrants when the border towns and border states have to deal with millions of migrants. It's incredible. You know, nothing is better, though, when Lori Lightfoot said it's inhumane, inhumane to send uh, <laughs> illegals to Chicago. Yes, it is, because you've destroyed that city. Oh, and they don't want they, they shouldn't be put there. But it's more inhumane if you make them watch the Chicago White Sox play, Lori Lightfoot. <laughs> Some of those illegal immigrants might want to go back if they see the crime rate in places like Chicago. It is not doing well at all. Like you said, Army, uh, New York is carrying a much smaller burden than those border towns, particularly in Texas. We've seen more than 2 million cross illegally each year under Joe Biden, but New York only took around 60,000 last year. They've taken around 4,000 in the past week. Other than putting them in prison or in hotels, where, where are they going? Who's helping them? I mean, they're just joining the ranks of the homeless. I mean, if you walk around the streets of Manhattan, you see illegals, certainly in my neighborhood, the Upper West Side, you see illegals sitting on park benches, lying on the street. Uh, no, they're doing very badly. It's, it's, it's another example and the, another way of exposing the failure of left-wing policies and the failure of left-wing mayors uh, all across America. They're only dealing with a fraction, yet they're saying that they're overwhelmed. And obviously they are overwhelmed. In Chicago, we have people sleeping on the floors of police stations and there's nowhere to put them as more and more come in. And they're putting these people in the hood. Let's be clear about this. They're putting these people in the hood. At least when we, when we look at Chicago, that's what we're seeing now. So we have people within the black community in lower income areas in that city who are noticing the effects. People who 90% vote Democrat are now experiencing the effects. So this is where we're at. So the story about the, the veterans being displaced, told to move from a hotel to make way for migrants, is, was basically false. The woman who runs the nonprofit who suggested this, uh, it turns out she was unable to provide proof that she had purchased those hotel rooms for these veterans. So basically the story appears to have been fabricated. And if you go onto my video where I mentioned that story, I have some clarification in the, in the pinned comments, so check that out. There's enough truth out there to bring home how serious this migrant crisis is without having to fabricate stories. Okay, so New York City Mayor Eric Adams, a Democrat, said in a new interview Sunday night that migrants from the US and Mexican border should be sent to every city throughout the entire country. But on the question of decompression, would it be more helpful if it was the federal government directing where migrants are moved to throughout the United States instead of you as New York City's mayor trying to figure out where you can send them within your state? Yes, it would. We have 108,000 cities, villages, towns. Uh, if everyone takes a small portion of that, and if it's coordinated uh, at the border, to ensure that those who are coming here uh, to this country in a lawful manner is actually uh, moved mm -hmm. throughout the entire country. It is not a burden on one city. And the numbers need to be clear. Uh, we received over 70,000 uh, migrant asylum seekers uh, in our city. 42,000 are still in our care. If yeah. this is properly handled at the border level, uh, this issue can be resolved while we finally get Congress uh, particularly the Republican Party, to deal with a sure. comprehensive immigration policy? No. This is a problem that was created by this administration, by Democrats. The Republican Party were not for this, as when Trump was president. There were less asylum seekers coming into the country when Trump was president. The numbers had gone down since Obama. That's fact. The numbers had gone down, and but that was attributed to racism, apparently. That was attributed to racism and bigotry. 
and you know people were saying that we should abolish ice you know and 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 things like that that's what they were saying abolish ice people are being separated at the border how mean and trump recently came out and said that that policy was to deter families from coming now i'm not saying i agree with it but he said that it's to deter families from coming because if you feel that you know if you believe that you're going to be separated from your children, you're just not going to come. Another immigration policy you had was the zero tolerance immigration policy that separated families at the border. If you are reelected, are you ruling out instituting that? Well, when you have that policy, people don't come. If the family hears that they're going to be separated, they love their family. They don't come. So I know it sounds harsh, but if you remember, remember they said I was building prisons for children. It turned out that it was Obama that was building but the prisons for the children. But would you re-implement that if you're re-elected? Is well, that what you're saying? Well, here's... We have to save our country, all right? We so can't it sounds afford, like that's a yes. No, no. When you say to a family that if you come, we're going to break you up, they don't come. And we can't afford to have any more. Look at New York City. Look what's happening. They're living in Central Park in New York City. The city is being swamped. Los Angeles is being swamped. Iowa is being swamped. Our whole country is being destroyed. Millions of people are coming into our country. And you know what the number is going to be, in my opinion, by the end of the year? Not the 4 million that you hear and the 3 million. Or two. I think it's going to be 15 million people. And in these people, they have no idea where they come from. They come from 129 different countries so far. 120, not just the just four to, that we talked about. A... So, again, whatever you think of that policy, at least... The Republicans had an idea of deterring people from coming so that we can have a number that we can handle. But this administration basically put out there that there were no borders. When you start putting out language such as it's racist to deter people away, we need to welcome people, uh, you know, we should have no borders. When you start saying things like that, sanctuary cities, that encourages people to come. And that is what is happening and it has been incentivized. You know, Joe Biden talking about 400, over $400,000 as compensation for migrants who were separated at the border. Again, that encourages people to come. Amid reports that the White House and fellow Democrat Adams have butted heads over the migrant crisis, notably as the mayor of New York City stepped away from President Joe Biden's re-election advisory board, CBS host Margaret Brennan on Sunday asked about whether, in Adam's view, the supposed $30 million in federal funding to address the influx into the Big Apple was enough. Adams said that New York City has already spent more than $1 billion in addressing the migrant crisis and is projected to need more than $4 billion more in funding. It's pretty insane how he's still talking about Republicans when this is the problem of this administration. This administration has downplayed the border crisis. They've denied that it even exists. You said yesterday that when it comes to illegal migration, you've seen it come down by more than 90 percent. Where did that number come from? It was, because I was CBP speaking. is telling us the number is. I hear you. I'm about to answer. I'm about, people more I'm about to answer you. Year so if you, far. if you, if the dramatics could come down just a little bit. I, yeah, um, it, if the dramatics could come down a little what's bit. What's dramatic? about asking a question about... Okay, I'm, go I'm gonna answer. Adams continues to get pushback in courts to his administration's plans to bus hundreds of single male adult migrants upstate and possibly to Long Island to stay in hotels for months. Those municipalities, under mostly Republican leadership, say they lack the resources to deal with asylum seekers processed in the Big Apple. They wanna basically send the asylum seekers, the Republican run areas, to people who didn't vote for this, to people who weren't for this. They want them to now deal with it as well. And this is what happens. I think Eric Adams is wrong. I don't think it's a matter of people being spread out across the country and that's gonna solve everything. That's not gonna solve everything. The amount coming in is too much regardless. And I find it interesting that Eric Adams said that we should get these uh, asylum seekers work. We really need to allow the migrants, asylum seekers to be able to have work status so that they can actually work in the various areas that we're looking for employment. Mayor Lightfoot, when she was mayor, she said the same thing. Apparently, they can be put to work. So why can't we do that for the, the homeless people and the people who don't have jobs? 
why can't we why can't we do that for them <laughs> it's just i don't understand when it comes to illegal migrants now all of a sudden these resources appear from nowhere so this isn't just affecting citizens it's going to affect the asylum seekers too many of them end up homeless many of them will end up in a very unfavorable position in this country and we know that the, what's going on at the border has enabled s trafficking it has enabled the fentanyl crisis so all of these things are not just the citizens are affected but the asylum seekers too who who came here for a better life but are not going to be finding that especially when there's no country left so let me know what you think thanks for watching take care of yourselves and god willing i will see you in the next video